What's up YouTube, how you guys doing? I hope you're all having an amazing day. This is Lucas, back again with another video for you guys. Let's get to this Q&A. Thanks to everyone who commented questions down below, people who messaged me on Instagram, a couple people messaged me on Twitter. I apologize if I don't get to your question, guys. I had a ton of comments to go through. Let's jump in. All right, let's start with the most liked question, which was how do you think kid slash teen ninja warrior should train? So I'm gonna get the obvious stuff out of the way at the beginning. Number one, you gotta have fun. If it's not fun, you're not gonna do it long term, so make sure you enjoy it, which means you wanna be around the obstacles as much as possible because that's really what the most fun thing to do is, is play on the obstacles. That's obviously fun, but of course, there is a time for some serious and focused training, which is what I wanna to talk to you more about. All you do is jump on obstacles, do laches. You're gonna get good at obstacles, but you gotta build that strength and that endurance that only comes from focused training, and that's setting up long courses, so I would recommend you set up some good long courses and make sure to really exhaust your grip that way. And also, man, I've said this so many times before on my channel, and it's not gonna be the last time I say it, rock climbing is key. It is crucial to Ninja Warrior. I firmly believe nobody's gonna win American Ninja Warrior without implementing rock climbing into their training in some way, shape, or form. Najee, Sean Bryan, those guys are both really solid competitors. They've been to stage three. I think they have a really solid chance at winning the entire thing, and they're gymnasts. So if you have a gymnastics background, maybe you don't need to implement rock climbing in a really heavy way, but other than that, I really don't see how somebody can win without rock climbing being their bread and butter. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe someone will prove me wrong, but even Drew, who's one of the top guys out there, even Joe, another one of the top guys out there, those guys understand the value of bouldering and top roping and the grip endurance that that brings to the table is something you'll never get through just Ninja Warrior training. I think rock climbing is crucial, and if not rock climbing, years and years of a gymnastics background. I think get around the obstacles, have fun, implement rock climbing in some way. And another thing that I like to encourage kids and teens to do is play a sport in school. Playing a sport in school completely changed my life. I wrestled in high school. It taught me discipline. It taught me focus. It taught me the, the values of hard work. And I think wrestling is an amazing sport. It's one of my favorite sports, but you can, get, you can learn those lessons doing any sport. You guys will not understand how much as an adult I realized I took so much for granted. You have access to coaches, to training facilities, you can play an organized sport, not necessarily for free, I know you do need to pay sometimes for uniforms and stuff, but for very cheap, and your parents will help you with that stuff. If you're in middle school, and definitely if you're in high school, you need to pick a sport, and you need to play at all four years of high school. That's my opinion. I would encourage you to do wrestling. It's one of the best sports in the world. That will help you in Ninja Warrior. It really will. Just doing that organized training and maybe lifting some weights, that's gonna help you in Ninja Warrior. A lot of you guys who are kids and teenagers, you're still growing, and I don't want you to have this unnecessary emphasis on the way you look and having really big muscles, like that's cool, but that's gonna come later. Like you're still young, you're still going through puberty. So, but here's the deal, building some basic strength in your entire body is gonna help you to be more athletic overall. So don't be afraid to play sports, to lift weights, especially as you get into high school. So have fun, be around the obstacles as much as possible because that's only gonna help you being around the obstacles. Rock climbing is key and play an organized sport in your school. I think that will help you in a huge way. Another top question from the same person, NBN NBA asks, who are your top five favorite American Ninja Warriors besides you and Alexio? I had a really hard time answering this question, but I'm gonna give you my list, and I really did think a lot about this. Number five is Jessie Graff, and the reason Jessie Graff is in my top five is because she's arguably the biggest star Ninja Warrior has created. I mean, it's not even arguable. I think she is the biggest star Ninja Warrior has created. It's not like Ninja Warrior made her entirely. She does stunt work and stuff, but the point is she's a huge star. Everybody wants to talk to her, and I've competed in the same region as Jessie Graff at, at least twice. If anybody has the right to kind of act like a celebrity, it's her. And and trust me, people who are nowhere near her status can act like that. Act like divas and, and want special treatment or whatever. In all my own interactions with Jesse, anytime I've seen her interact with fans and kids and parents, whoever, production, anybody, I love the way that she handles herself and I admire that and I wanna be like it. So for that reason alone, she's obviously also an incredible athlete. Number four is Brett Sims. He has freakish grip strength. He's also a legend to the sport. He's one of the very few people who have competed on every season of American Ninja Warrior. Awesome dude. Number three on my list is James the Beast McGrath. When I think back to my first season competing on American Ninja Warrior, James is one of the first people that comes to my mind because the way he treated my brother and I, Nobody knew us, we were brand new to Ninja Warrior, the community, and it was intimidating. Of course, it's gonna be super intimidating to be on a TV set and everything like that. Not only was James one of the nicest people to us, but he actually like coached us in a way. We were looking at certain obstacles, we were nervous, we were thinking about what we should do, and he was always telling us what his approach was gonna be, how he was thinking about attacking the obstacle. Some guys are really strong, some guys are great athletes, they get out there, they dominate the course. He's one person who has every movement planned. 
And I mean like down to the, the smallest, most minute details, where he's gonna put his left hand when he gets this part. How is he gonna dismount? How many swings is he gonna take? But he thinks about it on a whole other level. And I think that's the reason he's been able to finish so many city finals courses is where other guys will gas out and get tired. He's taken 5% less time on the first obstacle, 3% less time on the second obstacle, 10% less time on the fourth obstacle. And next thing you know, you know, he's got like 25, 30% more energy than everybody else at the end because he's so smart with his approach. Number two is the king himself, Drew Dreschel. I think he is the best ninja warrior competing today. I think when he wins it all, he's like LeBron James before he got a ring. It's like everybody knows he's the GOAT, but you know, he doesn't have a ring, so you can't really say it. After he wins, whether it's season 11, season 12, whatever. Once Drew conquers the mountain, everyone's gonna know he's the best and the argument's gonna be dead, I think. Drew has successfully become the face of this sport and, and he deserves it, dude. The guy's an incredible athlete and an awesome guy, so Drew is my number two. Before we get to my number one favorite American Ninja Warrior, I gotta do a couple honorable mentions. Daniel Gill, the Kingdom Ninja. Arnold Hernandez runs the Movement Lab out in SoCal and he's one of my favorite people out there. I've taken you to his gym before. Eddie Stewart is like my freaking brother. I love that guy. Kai Alexander, my boy. You guys see him all the time on this channel. Kai is one of my favorite people to train with in the world. JJ Woods, gotta represent Miami, he's my boy. Making this list was so hard for me because I have a lot of people I love in the ninja community, but we gotta get to number one, and that is without a doubt, Jake Murray. I've always been a fan of Jake Murray, but ever since Ninja vs. Ninja, when the Brazi Bros competed against Party Time, Jake has since been my favorite human on planet Earth. Everybody on this list are amazing athletes, but there are very few people who I look at them and I'm just like, the way he treats people, his athleticism, his dedication, his showmanship, his sense of humor. I seriously look at Jake and I'm like, I wanna be like that. So Jake Murray is definitely my number one favorite ninja. Penguin Sports 101 says, what's your favorite obstacle and why? And this is a pretty tough question for me to answer, but I think I'll say the Double Dipper because it's really fun. It's very scary, but it's really fun. I also really like the wing nuts, even though unfortunately I've never been able to try them in Vegas. I, I love the obstacle. It's a ton of fun to fly through the air. I know that's kind of a basic answer, sorry, but it's true. The big giant obstacles where you get to fly through the air are just the most fun. That's just the way it is, so. Next question says, what's your max dead hang? And when you were a kid, what career did you want to have? I don't know my max dead hang. And to be honest, guys, I don't know if I want to know my max dead hang. Everyone I know who has done this and timed out their max dead hang, their hands are a bloody mess after they get a ton of rips. And I'm not interested in doing that. Ripping, ripping looks cool for Instagram and everything, but the truth is if you rip, you're not gonna be able to train right for at least four or five days. I'm really not sure what my time would be. I would think over 15 minutes, but I'm not gonna try. When I was a kid, what career did I wanna have? I really don't know. I feel like I've always wanted to be an entertainer. I love singing, I love music, I love being on stage. For a long time as a kid, I wanted to do stand-up comedy but I also loved sports and I still love sports. I love Ninja Warrior, I love competition. I've kind of wanted to do a lot of different things, but what I ended up doing now, which is being a worship leader at my church, is kind of like a dream come true. That is the perfect job for me. I don't see myself doing anything other than that. And of course, I love making YouTube videos. I love competing on Ninja Warrior, so. Crazy for Trapping asks, do you enjoy doing YouTube? And the answer is absolutely yes, I freaking love it. Mary Polarin asks, what's the farthest lache you've ever done? And I think it was about 11 feet at Ninja Lounge. And the only reason I haven't done a further one is because I don't have any setup with a further lache than that, but I think I could do 12, 13, maybe 14, but we, we'd have to see. Mallory said, what exercises do you recommend for beginner calisthenics? Pull-ups, dips, push-ups, squats, lunges, and running. And if you can't do any of those exercises, negatives. Negative pull-ups, negative dips, negative push-ups. Negatives are key to building strength in anything. Madison asks a deep question. What is your purpose for doing YouTube and what message do you wanna to give to your viewers? The message that I want you guys to take away from my channel is of course, I say at the end of all my videos, work hard, stay focused, never quit. And at the end of the day, I'm just documenting my own life and my own journey. I love American Ninja Warrior. I want you guys to see the training that goes into it. I want you guys to see what it's like to be on the show, get all those behind the scenes videos every year. And I really want you guys to see the dedication that it takes to accomplish something. And hopefully one day I'll accomplish all my goals and you guys will get to see the journey. My goal for YouTube this year is to get 100,000 subscribers. And thanks Madison for believing me. I know you said you think I can do it. I wanna get 100K this year and we'll see what happens after that. Caleb says, I've been lacking in the training department lately. What are some ways I can get back into training? Caleb, I always tell people, don't make it complicated. If you've been on the couch for two weeks or three weeks or a month and you've been super lazy, just take it slow. Today, make it your goal to do 20 pull-ups and 20 push-ups and go outside and practice the salmon ladder for, for 30 minutes. Simple, that's it. Maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. But the point is just do something. Set small goals, all right? For the next week, I want you to go outside and spend at least 15 minutes on your backyard course every single day. Start small. Next question says, who is your inspiration overall in life and why? And that is a really 
deep question, man. I got a few questions kind of like this, so I'm gonna answer all of them at once. My motivation, the reason I get up every day, do what I do, it sounds cliche and it's been said a million times before, but I don't care because it's true. I love my wife so much and I'm so excited to be a dad. Everything I'm doing in my life stems from my love for them. That's that's how I feel. That sounds so cliche, I'm sorry. It's the truth though, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm not even gonna change what I just said. And I love my family in general, you know? So that's kind of my motivation across the board for everything that I do. I think people just get motivation so so mixed up. It comes down to your identity, like who you believe you are. When people ask me like, Lucas, why do you work out so hard? Why do you train so much? dude? It's just who I am. There's a really good book called High Performance Habits and this guy talks about necessity through identity. Everybody knows what they should do but very few people do it because they say they should work out or they should train or they should eat healthy. But you have to find a way to turn your shoulds into musts. It's not that I should work out, I must work out. I, it's not that I should eat healthy, I have to eat healthy. This is, this is it's, it's necessity through identity. This is who I am. Sometimes I don't even work hard because I need to achieve my goals. I just work hard because I work hard. That's who I am, it's in, it's in my veins now, you know what I mean, I can't stop. I just hope you get the idea that inspiration and motivation and all these things that people are always looking for and they can't find it, like, it just needs to become who you are or you're not gonna do it. You're never gonna do something that doesn't align with your identity and this is who I am, dude. This is an interesting question. What sports do you think other than parkour, rock climbing, and gymnastics carry over well to Ninja Warrior? Those are the big three, 100%. If you want to do well in American Ninja Warrior, you need to dabble in all three of those, I think, especially parkour and rock climbing. But if you have a gymnastics background, I mean, you are going to be light years ahead of everybody else. But what other sports do I think would transfer well? I think wrestling will, and I, I know I'm biased. It's the sport that I did and the sport that I love, but grip strength is extremely important in grappling martial arts and, and you know, things like jujitsu and wrestling. Um, you know, judo, where you're wearing a gi and you're grabbing things, that's gonna really increase your grip strength. So I think those sports would carry over well. Martial arts will carry over well strictly for the mental aspect. So yeah, that's the only thing I can come up with off the bat, but I don't know. Good question. Will I ever do a cut to see how lean I can get? I will never be any leaner than I was in the pull-up tutorial video that I did a few weeks ago. That was me weighing like 161 pounds. I'll never be lighter than 160 pounds. The Dice Dude TV asks, how many pull-ups can you do in a row? I've done a video on this. I got 40. I want to do another video on this. Kalanit Tob says, do you prefer to train alone or with others? I prefer to train with others. Training with others with a partner is always superior to training alone. You will always push yourself harder, especially when you train with someone who's better than you. Those are the kinds of people you wanna be around. So find someone better than you, train with them. Michael Wexler, I do not play Fortnite. I do not play video games. I don't own video games. If I did, I would play them all day long. I am not responsible enough to own video games. I have played with some friends though at their house. It's pretty freaking fun. Walk a man, I'm using a Canon G7X Mark II. I love this camera. Brian Madden says, would you like to try out for the Titan games? My answer is no. The Titan games, requires a very specific skill set. Everyone who's doing well weighs like 230 pounds or more. These are huge, large NFL linebacker style. And that's not me. In order to do well in American Ninja War, you need to be very lean, have good grip strength. You need great athleticism, don't get me wrong, but you need to pack some serious power if you're gonna do well in the Titan games. You need to be big, you need to be deadlifting heavy, squatting heavy. Again, different skill set. Like, I'm trying to be like a cat, and those guys are trying to be like, a bulldozer. If I were to ever do the Titan games, I'd have to change up a lot of my training. So no, I don't really want to do it. Awesome show though. Becca the Beast asks, I like that name. How old am I and have I applied for season 11 of American Ninja Warrior? I'm 25 years old and absolutely yes, I applied for season 11 of American Ninja Warrior. So far, I haven't heard of anybody getting called to compete yet. I don't think calls have officially started, but uh, fingers crossed. Let's hope I get the call this year. Angie asks, if you could choose the obstacles in stage three, what would they be? I like this question. I almost like this question so much I wanna do an entire separate video on it because I haven't thought too much about this. But uh, the floating doors for sure, cliffhanger for sure. I may even add the motorized movement of the cliffhanger in Sasuke to America just because it's so freaking cool, man. It's such a cool obstacle. I would add the vertical limit from Sasuke Flying bar is definitely gonna stay in the final position. It's a really exciting obstacle to end stage three on. I would get rid of on guard from season 10. Don't love the obstacle for stage three. I also think I would add back the uh, inverted rock wall. That's kind of like an iconic staple in my mind. I, I don't like that it went away. Ooh, I would get rid of the body prop. 
that obstacle is so freaking hard and th that's just a personal thing it's probably a good obstacle for stage three i actually don't have a video of it but i got to test the body prop you guys have seen my my testing video in vegas last year i tested the body prop and fell almost instantly i was terrible at it i don't know if my shoes were dusty or what but i found the obstacle to be so hard if I were on stage three, and I hope I will be on stage three season 11, I wouldn't want to do the body prop. That's why I'd get rid of it. I hope that answers your question enough to uh, satisfy your curiosity. I know that's not exactly the order I would have it in or anything like that. I haven't thought too much about it, but those are some obstacles that I love for stage three, and those are some obstacles I would take out of stage three. Daniel Lee wants to know what I think the hardest obstacle on American Ninja Warrior is, and that's kind of a hard question. One specific obstacle, maybe the floating doors. Maybe the cliffhanger and the vertical limit in Japan for sure, but that's not in America. So at the end of the day though, the reason people are failing these courses is not because of any one specific obstacle. It's the cumulative effect. That's a big word of one after the other, after the other fatigue begins to set in and that's why you fail. What are my goals for A&W 11? I want to compete in stage three buzzer in stage one buzzer in stage two be a stage three competitor. Would I attempt the mega wall? Definitely yes. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Matthew Johnson, you want to do 10 pull-ups by the end of the year and right now you can do two. What do I recommend? You need to train your pull-ups three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you need to focus on negatives, okay? So first do your two that you can do and then you're going to do the rest as negatives. Five sets of five reps. If you focus on your negatives, I promise you it's going to build the strength for you to be able to get your pull-ups. DeAndre Williams has a lot of questions. My workout split right now. Monday, one arm pull-up training. Tuesday, I'm doing push, so lots of push-ups and like some cardio. Wednesday, bouldering. Thursday, right now I'm doing core and some cardio too, some like hit training, sprinting and stuff. Friday, I'm either bouldering or going to ATP and training on obstacles. Saturday, I'll normally train core again, and Sunday I normally rest. Two, do I still lift? Not really. I lift my body weight a lot, obviously, but I don't have a gym membership. Just focus on my rock climbing and I focus on my, my calisthenic fundamentals. I already covered number three. Number four, is your kid a boy or a girl? Let me answer all the questions about the kid right now because I got a lot of questions about this kid. I don't know yet. I will know soon and I'm excited to tell you guys, but we don't know yet if it's boy or girl. We should know in a few weeks. Baby name ideas. We have a couple ideas, but you don't get to know yet. Stay tuned for baby updates, but... I'm gonna be a dad. Where would I have gotten results wise if I had run in Miami? So I was a tester in Miami. And if you guys remember, I failed on Slippery Summit as a tester, which made me really mad. But just keep in mind, on qualifiers night, people who failed that obstacle, some of them, if they made it there fast enough, still got to move on to finals. I believe with my whole heart that I would have made it to city finals and I believe I would have qualified for Vegas. So that's that. In Vegas, I might've failed a jumping spider. I failed a jumping spider in Vegas as a tester. So, uh, you know, listen, season 10 sitting out was disappointing, but it's good to be a tester. You get to learn some things about yourself, learn about the obstacles. And now I'm confident that I would clear stage one. So it's, you know, God knows what he's doing up there. He's always thinking. Probably would have gone to Vegas, might've failed the jumping spider, but uh, the Canadian Ninja has a lot of good questions. So first one is what's filmed first, USA versus the world or all stars. And I think it's USA versus the world, if I'm not mistaken, pretty sure it's National Finals for American Ninja Warrior, USA versus the world, and then All-Stars. If I competed in All-Stars, what event would I compete in? I have no idea. I can't even really remember what some of the events are. I, I remember the Wingnut Challenge with the huge gap because that was the craziest one. I don't think I would do that. I don't know. I would do whatever they told me to do. Shoot. If I faced the floating monkey bars in Season 11, would I beat it? Absolutely yes. You guys know I failed that obstacle Season 8, and I think if I got another shot at it, I would definitely clear it. I'm like a completely different athlete than I was back then. It's been season eight, nine, it's been almost three years. So yeah, I think I'll clear it. What course that I've attempted so far is my favorite? I like this question a lot. Um, so really it comes down to Atlanta or Daytona. Probably Daytona. Unfortunately, I don't have good footage of me running there. Which Atlanta was fun. Atlanta had the baskets. The pipe fitter I did not like. That was a really hard obstacle. Um, and of course the floating monkey bars took me out there. That, they, those, there was a lot of great obstacles in both, but I like Daytona. Daytona had the wing nuts. Rolling Thunder was a lot of fun. Rolling Thunder is a crazy pump, and I, I like the boxes, so I would say Daytona. This next question is all about running, and I like this question. Basically, you want to know my thoughts on running. Do I run? Did I do track or cross country? Yes, I did cross country just for one short season in high school to prepare me for wrestling season, and I was in the best shape ever that season. I like running. I don't love long distance running. If you're passionate about long distance running, then go crazy, be a long distance runner. But the truth is long distance running is pretty hard on your joints. It's good for your heart, but at the end of the day, 
I want to train to be an athlete. I want to train to be explosive. I want to train to have good power. And I need, I want to have good endurance. There are ways where you can get more bang for your buck. Like if you do HIIT training, which is like more like sprinting, you're going to be good at sprinting. You're going to be more powerful and you're going to have pretty good endurance. But if you have the best endurance in the world, if you can run 20 miles, you're not going to be a good sprinter at all. Does that make sense? So one has carry over to both and one only makes you good at one. Don't focus on low intensity, steady state cardio. Focus on high intensity, explosive training. That will give you more bang for your buck. I love running. Running's a ton of fun, but I would recommend you do sprints. If you do sprints, you're gonna, you're gonna find that you're gonna be in great shape. You're gonna build muscle. Your legs are gonna be jacked. You're gonna be able to jump higher. You're gonna be able to move faster. It's just so much better than like, you see people on a treadmill for like an hour in the gym like, I'm gonna lose weight someday. It's like, no, no, you're not, not doing that. I will say this about long distance running. It is a freaking mental battle. I think long distance runners, these dudes who do like triathlons and biking, swimming, these ultra endurance events have some bulletproof mindsets. So I love this question because I want you guys to have some good perspective on this. Are there obstacles that intimidate slash scare me? All of them, basically. I'm not kidding about that actually. Like I'm, I, I was about to say I'm exaggerating, but for real, the steps, the freaking steps scare me. When you're up there, you're gonna be a little bit nervous. Now I'm wait, my first time I thought I was gonna die, but it's intimidating. And, the, and one of the things that helps eliminate fear is repetition. You, we fear what we don't know. So if there's an obstacle that scares you, you need to get around it as much as possible. But like, I remember being at the top of the Double Dipper as a tester in Vegas and being like, oh my gosh, this is where I die. Anything with a trampoline to, to something, you know, even as a tester in Miami, jumping on that tramp to catch that ring. If I had to answer your question specifically, I would say the huge obstacles like the Double Dipper and uh, anything with a trampoline where you've got to, where you've got to jump and catch something that's high. Um, the hand-eye coordination to catch it isn't as much of a big deal as getting that perfect jump off the trampoline. That's something I need to practice more. I'm gonna look really quick through Instagram and see if there's any more questions. Gosh, this video might be one million hours long. I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I going to NNL finals? Yes, I will be at the NNL finals in Hartford, Connecticut in February. Hopefully I'll meet you there. Luke Hamachek says, what do you order at the Waffle House after a &W? I love that question. If you've seen my behind the scenes videos, you know, after Ninja Warrior every year, city qualifier, city finals, we, my brother and I have gone to Waffle House with the family. And I normally get a peanut butter and chocolate chip waffle. Who doesn't love waffles? If you don't, they're pancakes with abs. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to the like button. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. I feel like I answered a ton of questions right now, golly. The most liked questions are the ones I'm gonna answer first. So if you comment a question down below and it gets the most likes, I'll definitely answer that one in my next video. Don't forget, work hard, stay focused, never quit. Peace out.